welcome to yet another brand new episode of the Fly King Fisher Winning Post with me, Chetty Narula. I'm standing right here at the Royal Western India Turf Club. As usual, we bring you racing action from across the world. But first up, let's take a flight straight to Singapore and take a roundup of the Singapore Derby 2012. The Group 1 Emirates Singapore Derby is the oldest sponsorship partnership between a sponsor and the Singapore Turf Club and the anticipation leading up to the 2000 meter contest was high. In fact, despite the race being a middle distance race, the post position draw had the connections all looking for the slightest of advantages for a race that comes just once in the career of a racehorse. On race day itself, not surprisingly, a full field of 16 entered the parade ring without a clear-cut favourite. Chase Me and Arowana.com were fielded from Desmond Coe's yard and both carried some sensible form into this race. Chase Me with Morera in the saddle had stepped up to group company in April of this year and while he hadn't yet found the winner's circle on four attempts, he was finally getting up to go over a trip that he was suited to. Arowana.com also was looking for his first group success and had ciphered him in the saddle to help him do so. Redbeard and the multiple group winner Gingerbread Man from Bruce Marsh's stable were also coming into this race with the kind of form that found supporters. Gingerbread Man was to be ridden by Simi and had run third to Chris Flyer's print winner Atto in the Group 1 Patrons Bowl after winning the Stewart's Cup before that. Holding form on Chase Me and another runner deep pockets from that race, Gingerbread Man looked the part in the parade ring. Redbeard, on the other hand, was looking for his first group success and looked to have gotten past his problems with a strong victory three weeks earlier. Opie Boston would join the son of Zeno Rob Roy in the saddle and jump from barrier number eight. Lightning Thief and Deep Pockets from Cliff Brown Stable were joined in their saddles by John Paul and Danny Beasley, respectively. Lightning Thief was coming off a respective performance in the Patrons Bowl, as was Deep Pockets, who had run a close fourth on that occasion. Pandora from Michael Friedman's stable with Basta in the saddle had run second in the Patrons Bowl and had the beating off all from there here. He had won the Group 3 Moonbeam Vase over 1800 meters in April of this year and not surprisingly edged out the others for favoritism at start time. Dujardin from Laurie Laxon Stable was another worth considering with two victories from just three starts at Crunchy. With the experienced Mundro on his back, Dujardin was set to overcome his lack of it despite the extended trip. With the 16 runners locked away, the starter set the field away for one of the most important races of their lives. Horn and Nandara away quickly. Up on the inside, Joyful Heartman was niggled forward and be ahead coming across along with Red Beard. Lightning Thief began well. Gingerbread Man wide. Sami trying to slot across. Davide is over racing towards the inside. Just outside of him is Forgiven between horses. Then Chase Me, Dujardin. Arowana.com, Deep Pockets back on the inside. Silver on wings, hammer down and grand arrival. For home they come and Red Beard turns for home with a slender lead in the derby. Be ahead now. And Dara go up and chase me. He's coming to it very quickly. Magic Marira and Chase Me races away in the derby. Inside the 270. Chase Me races out by five lengths. Gingerbread Man uh, running on hard is Deep Pockets. Arowana.com. Silver on wings, but a one act affair for Chase Me. He's going to annihilate them. Deep Pockets runs on into second, then Arowana.com. But Chase Me takes out the Emirates Singapore Derby by eight lengths. I was really thinking about and wishing this race and Unfortunately, this, this one coming today, and uh, I have no word to explain how happy I am for that. I just want to say thanks to all those people who come over to support us. Uh, they really mean a lot to us. I'm just so happy. At the first band here, I was pretty lucky to get him in a very good spot. Just one off the fence. Uh, there was a couple of uh, small little issues going on in front of me, but he was pretty good, and I just hold him back. He got himself out of the troubles. And, uh, 
I knew this horse, I had to, to start to work early on him. That's why everybody else see me from the 600 meters uh, already going on him and uh, he just smashed everybody else on, on top of the straight. When I was passing by the last 200, I realized, unbelievable, how come this guy is gonna win so easily like that? I was confident he was gonna run a super race, but we only know if he was gonna win after the race. And Chase Me was devastating as he drew away from his rivals by eight lengths. The son of Storm Creek clearly came into his own over this trip and to the delight of his connections, took his earnings at Cranji to nearly a million dollars. For Desmond Co, this was a dream result with a 1-3 finish as Arowana.com ran third. Well now, Chase Me's performance in the Emirates Singapore Derby was unique to say the least. Uh, here was a horse who was improving over time but was improving as he went over a longer trip. His pedigree dosage index, dosage profile clearly shows that he's bred to stay and when he hit that 10 furlong trip, he proved to be devastating. He also acted very well on the ground which did have a bit of a yielding underfoot condition. He's followed that up however with an, a very impressive victory in the Chairman's Trophy two weeks later to come out of a derby and win a Group 2 race two weeks later is no mean feat. So he's clearly a horse that's hit a purple patch. His obvious eventual target for the year is going to be the Singapore Gold Cup. That's over 2,200 meters. Will he truly get 2,200 meters? Yes, the way he gallops for sure. He's got enough stoutness in his pedigree. His danger, however, will continue come from the older horse, El Dorado. So that was the Singapore Derby 2012 countdown right there. Trainer Desmond Goh, of course, securing the biggest win of his career with the Singapore Derby 2012 worth $1.15 million. Time now to take a flight straight to Bangalore and give you a roundup of the Bangalore Saint Ledger, which is the last classic of the Bangalore summer racing season. The Group 2 Bangalore Saint Ledger is the last classic of the summer season. Let's take a look at the five contenders competing for this classic. In the spotlight, at 9 to 10 for the Bangalore Saint Ledger was beaten in the Maharaja's Cup to Toro Loco. Irfan Ghatala's Toro Loco benefited by the frantic pace in the Maharaja's Cup. Toro Loco at 3 to 1 is a fancied contender for the Bangalore Saint Ledger. Volterra at 15 to 1 is in the fray but is not expected to give in the spotlight or Toro Loco a fight for supremacy. Star Marquis at 20 to 1 hasn't been consistent in terms of stamina and is an out and out stayer. Swiss Dawn is at 7 to 1. They're all in for the Bangalore Saint Ledger Group 2 run over 2,800 meters. They're all in. They're off and racing for the Grade 2 Bangalore St. Ledger, a level start by all the five. And as they settle down to race, it's uh, Volterra on the outside picking it up from in the spotlight in second position. Two lengths for the back there is Star Marquis, then comes Swiss Stone, and the close last is uh, Toro Loco. Into the home stretch now with about 400 to go, and in the spotlight is still traveling well. About three lengths clear of Toro Loco coming into contention on the outside. Then there is Volterra struggling to keep up. Star Marquis is out of it, 200 meters more to run and in the spotlight is showing a metal once again. She's about three and a half lengths clear in front of Toro Loco. In the spotlight, back to her winning ways, wins the Bangalore St. Ledger Grade 2 with a measure of comfort from Toro Loco finishing up second. Then there is Volterra followed by Star Marquis and Swiss Dawn. Well, the Bangalore St. Ledger played out exactly the way I thought it would. In the spotlight, I thought it was great value for money at even money or nearabouts there. And I think she performed the way she should have. Ignore her last run before that, cut a line through it. She was tackled early. Martin Dwyer, I thought, uh, went with the pace. He could have perhaps held her back a little bit. And sure enough, she set herself up, but not this time. She had that run under her belt. I'm sure she must have come on from there. But I think under different circumstances, a different kind of race, different kind of pace, and nobody to tackle her uh, early on in the race and make her gallop from too far out did the trick. She won as well as I thought she would. Trainer Padmanabhan was in the spotlight again. 
she came back with a vengeance after losing to Toro Loco in the Maharaja's Cup. In the spotlight, gave a thumping performance in the Bangalore St. Ledger Group 2, running ahead of Toro Loco and Volterra in the second and third positions. Martin Dwyer allowed Volterra to go ahead and set himself ahead of the rest of the pack. The entire pack picked up pace after their half journey. Near the six furlong marker, in the spotlight, up the pace. Toroloko was moving on the wide outside and Swiss Dawn dropped out of the battle. Padmanabhan is sure in the spotlight for all the right reasons. We've got more on this trainer. Take a break right here on the Fly King Fisher winning post. When we come back, we've got lots more action waiting for you on the other side. Welcome back. You're watching the Fly Kingfisher winning post. Now, trainer Padmanabhan is in the spotlight for all the right reasons and is the talk of the racing fraternity as well. He won the Bangalore St. Leisure 2012 and he took home the Bangalore Derby 2012 as well. Now, what better time than now to get to know the racing pro better? Here's a story on trainer Padmanabhan and his wife, the dynamic Sharmila Padmanabhan. <laughs> Sadakshara Ruben Padmanabhan, married to the dynamic Sharmila Padmanabhan, is one of the most prolific trainers in the Indian racing circuit. The winner of the Kingfisher Bangalore Derby 2012, this duo are sure the talk of the country today. The winning post catches up with the Padmanabhans who have also trained the winner of the Bangalore St. Ledger, putting them in the spotlight for all the right reasons. This prolific trainer, popularly known as Paddy in the racing circuit, owns, trains and has bred the Bangalore Derby winner, Borsellino. He takes us through a success story. I think it was, it was just like everybody would start. Uh, we had, I had at least very poor, a lot of horses, older horses and lame horses. Uh, those, those horses taught me how to train. When time came, the good ones came in. Then we were training good ones and we were improving on the performances. I, as a goalpost, I always pushed the levels of success. We, if in a year I won two group races, next year I thought I should win six. You know, goalpost should be something which you cannot reach, you know, where you struggle to reach. But I guess in the last few years we have been fortunate to be patronized by owners. Who, who have very good horses, who are breeding very good horses and uh, that helped things in a big way. You know, the trainer is as good as the horses he has. Uh, he has won the Bangalore Derby twice over, so he was very, very keen to win the Indian Derby, which was eluding him for a long time. But I'm sure this has a special significance because it is owned by us and trained by him. So definitely, uh, well, I don't know if it's as important as the Indian Derby, but every Derby is important, let's put it that way. Bosal, you know, is a very special occasion for us because we won the brood mare. We sent her abroad. We brought her back uh, covered by a good stallion. And uh, today he went out and won the Derby. You know, we had offers for him. We had offers for the dam at various stages, but we continue to keep faith in the mare and keep her keep the progenies for us to race. We are damn thrilled with the result. It's, uh, it's not only training horses, it is also owning them and then breeding out of the good ones, which is, which is a very special thrill, you know. If 
you look at it, you know, eight lands behind the best bred horses in the country were eight lands behind Bosil, you know, which is a great thrill for us because we are coming into a full circle of, of being an owner, trainer and a breeder. But it was a great pleasure to see a horse uh, bred by us come back from abroad and, you know, win over here, which is a record which has not been done by anybody in India as of today. Padmanabhan has come in full circle in his career as he not only owns some of the best classic winning horses in this country, he has also trained them and bred them. Running Flame, the dam of his derby winning colt Borsellino, has an interesting story there. Running Flame, actually I bought uh, Running Flame for a client of mine and unfortunately before she started racing he went out of uh, uh, racing. So we had, uh, we were left with this particular horse, it's the only horse he had with me. And I went and made an offer to him, saying that I would like to keep this filly, and uh, I, I would pay her 50% of whatever she earns. And that turned out very well for both of us. So I took it over from him and uh, he made a net profit of 70 or 80 lakhs uh, because the filly kept winning races. Eventually she became our property. And uh, then after that, uh, she won three or four, four more graded races in Hyderabad. Then uh, we took her abroad, we raced her abroad. It was a new experience for us. And, and spent uh, a lot of money. Money is, money is what we earn. So money doesn't earn us. So it, it went, went along. Then we bred her. We had the privilege of training with some of the best trainers in the world and uh, today she's come back to me and uh, I'm thrilled that I could train a derby winner out of her. The couple have some great plans for Borsellino and they take us through it all. I think it deserved a, a rest, a break from training. He, he's, he's raced in Bangalore, he went to Bombay, he came back, he's had five or six starts and all, all the starts he was on the boil. So we will uh, think about him in uh, winter probably. His wife Sharmila's association with horse racing dates back to when she was a kid and her father was a proud owner of horses too. My association with horse racing goes back to when I was a kid. My father owned a lot of horses in Calcutta. So I've, I've always grown up in this ambience of horse racing and I also happened to meet my husband on the race course <laughs> during the invitation in Calcutta. Today, she manages the administrative aspect of Padmanabhan's racing career. After marriage, of course, I got more and more and more involved and uh, I play a lot of active part, not in the training, but in the administration work. But the boss at home is clearly Sharmila. <laughs> Obviously me. <laughs> and finally even the owners think I'm the boss in the stables as well. They keep teasing him a lot about it. <laughs> they say, <laughs> who's the best, the real boss we have to meet. Uh, but I'm one of the few wives, trainers' wives, who's genuinely interested in, uh, you know, in the racing bit. And I think I'm pretty knowledgeable today about what is going on, you know. I'm not just, uh, just an amateur hanging around in the race course. This is one couple who met at the race course and eventually decided to tie the knot. While Padmanabhan and Sharmila spend most of their collective time on their racing career, there are other sports that they have much interest in. I think uh, basically you have to unwind, you have to, you, you can't always be working, then it will be like a coil spring under tension. The basic thing is, you know, I go home every day by 7 o'clock in the evening, that's my time. And after 9 o'clock, I don't pick up the phone unless it's from my stable who they're calling if there's an emergency. And apart from that, uh, I'm interested in cricket, I'm interested in golf. We play some amateur cricket now and then, which uh, keeps us going. And uh, that, that's the way uh, the cookie crumbles. I love playing cards. So whichever whatever time I can get off from work, I run to play cards, you know. That was I but I play a bit of golf as well. Team Fly King Fisher winning post wishes them a splendid career going forward. We saw a champion in Borsellino. To me, 
that was a red letter day happening for Indian breeding. Running Flame, his mother, the winner of the Indian Turf Invitation, the Indian Oaks, a number of Group 1 races, and now, of course, her son, uh, Borsellino, coming and winning the Grade 1, the uh, Bangalore Summer Derby, sponsored by Kingfisher. So, really, a great moment, I think, historically in the country's history. I think uh, India has a lot to feel proud for, for what's happened this afternoon at the Bangalore Turf Club. Indeed, a phenomenal story right there as to how the Padmanabhids met each other at the race course and today they're making a career together. Team Fly Kingfisher winning post wishes them all the luck going forward in their career. Time now to take a quick break right here on the Fly Kingfisher winning post. We've got lots more racing action waiting for you. On the other side, we travel straight to Pune. Welcome back. You're watching the Fly Kingfisher winning post and the Pune racing season kicks off in great style. Let's straight go over now to Pune to get all the racing action from there. Looking ahead to the Pune season, it's always exciting. Pune is uh, such a super race course. It's so cozy. It's so warm. As far as the racing goes, you're so close to the action as compared to Bombay when the stands are a little further back. There's uh, just that camaraderie in Pune that makes it so much fun. Talking about the horses, I still think from the classic crop, we are yet to see a standout champion. That hasn't happened yet. Uh, I think that will evolve. Horses are maturing, getting better. And looking ahead to the Nanoli Star Puna Derby at the end of the season, I still think we are waiting to see the horse that's going to take our breath away. The Pune Racing Season 2012 was preceded by a grand curtain raiser at Hyatt Regency Pune on the eve of the opening day. Mr. Vivek Jain, the chairman of the RWITC, was at his oratory best. The 2012 Pune racing season is all ready to gallop off the blocks. From lucrative prize money to top quality sponsored races, from excellent partnerships to attracting the creme de la creme of society, the eagerly anticipated monsoon racing season promises all that and much more. One of Pune's lively weekends is the Nanoli Derby weekend that brings in the Oktoberfest along with it. The last leg of the Indian Classics, the McDowell Indian St. Ledger Group 1 will be run on the last Sunday of September. A new addition this year is the online ticket booking facility that commences for the convenience of the racing patrons. The entire racing fraternity looks forward to the Pune racing season 2012. Well, that's all that we have for you on this power-packed episode of the Fly Kingfisher Winning Post. See you again next weekend with all the racing action from all over the world. Until then, may the horse be with you. Fly Kingfisher Winning Post is powered by the Serum Institute of India and Hirko Industries.